Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that didn't make it, to the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up to John chapter 7, verse 14. We're going to try to shoot through this. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. On this beautiful Sabbath night. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knows this, knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right? They wanted to know. How in the world this man know the scriptures and he ain't never learned them? They assumed he never learned them. They don't know about him. You know what I'm saying? If we go all the way back to, what is it, Luke 2? Mm -hmm. You can go back to Luke 2. The man sat down and he said he went to the doctors of the law and sat with him and he learned from them. All right? Asked him questions and they questioned him. All right? He, they, don't, they don't know nothing about that, but you know, you're a young man and you learn something in a way that the people wasn't really paying attention to you and you hold on to it, then you do it under the radar. You didn't do it the way that, that people expected it to go, that the normal people would do it. Seminary right? on. Yeah, you know, nowadays, you, you know what I'm saying, they want you to have a seminary under your belt. You know what I'm saying? You want to have a seminary, you want to go to your Catholic seminary, your Pentecostal seminary, your Baptist seminary. You know what I'm saying? You got to go to your seminary and learn it. Learn the ways of your, your denomination. You know what I'm saying? Learn the ways to pack your church out, to manage your church. You know what I'm saying? That's all they teach you. You got to deceive the people. You know, how to make the people feel good. They teach you all this stuff and teach you how not to use it, how not to actually tell people all this stuff. All right? All right? That's what we look at. So Yahushua, he came a different route. He didn't go the route that corrupts. All right? And so when they looked at him, they were like, man, how this man know it? Obviously, they knew he knew it, though. Right? He spoke that word. He was like, oh, man, I don't know how this man know it. How he know he ain't never learned? Let's see what he said. Y'all sure answered him and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He said, my doctrine isn't mine, but it's his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Mm -hmm. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in, is in him. Everything in our heart got to seek the glory of the most high God. Otherwise, we'd mess around and start seeking our own glory, trying to make sure that we look good and we all right and we getting praised. And at that point, that's when the Most High God is going to take your butt darn down. All right? That's why he tell you, you take the lesser seat. You know what I'm saying? You do that, somebody will mess around and tell you, like, man, why are you sitting there? Why don't you move up to a better seat? You know what I'm saying? You don't want nobody to tell you, no, get your butt up and go move down there. You don't belong in this darn seat. He said, make a fool out of you. All right? We can't seek for our own glory. Where we leave off last week? So last week, we were talking about. We ended up talking about the beast. You know what I'm saying? We were talking about how uh, there were, uh, uh, we were talking about the deception of the Most High. I'm sorry, deception that the Most High God is going to send on the world in the form of a beast that's like a lamb with two horns, and he speak like a darn dragon. We talking about this dragon. You know what I'm saying? You say he speak like a dragon. We think, oh, this man going to have fiery breath and talking this, that, and other. No, 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 no. We learned about the dragon. We said that dragon was the same as that devil, that serpent. You know what I'm saying? That serpent called the devil. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, and uh, we we learned about how the serpent uh, beguiled Eve, right, and tricked her, um, and how technically he didn't lie to do it. You know what I'm saying? In a technical sense, quote quote. You know what I'm saying? He didn't lie to do it. And so we can look at deception in that same light that will come from this lamb. Then we learned that the lamb came from a beast with seven horns and ten. Uh, I'm sorry, seven heads and ten horns. We recognize that them uh, the, those seven heads were actually, let's draw them up there, actually. We recognize that the seven heads were uh, Egypt. The next one was uh, Assyria. Then the next one, what did I have? Babylon. Then you have uh, the Medes. 
Medes and the Persians. All right. Then after that, you got uh, what Greek, and then the Roman. All right. So you got the one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's one more, and we'll just put a question mark there. All right. So we look at those things and we say those are seven heads. All right. It told us that there were seven heads. Five were in the past. One currently is, and one has not come yet. The one that had not come yet when, when John the Baptist was writing this. Not John the Baptist. John the disciple. I mean, I'm sorry, not John the Baptist, sorry. Uh, John, uh, John uh, the son of Zebedee was uh, writing this. Um, you'll see that Rome was the only one in power, all right? So we didn't know which one came next, and we don't want to speculate unless we got booked for it, all right? So we know that there was something that came after Rome. A lot of people will say the Ottoman Empire. A lot of people will have other theories and all that. I don't want to get into that too much because we don't have a book for it. But I do have a book for everything else. Then after that, it told us that one of these that were, right, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medes, Persia, and Greek, uh, the Greeks, one of these that were will end up being again. And they said that that would be the eighth head, right? That would be the eighth. So, we also looked inside of Daniel, and it talked about how Greece would have a horn uh, that comes out of its beast that uh, would come in the latter times when the, when the, when the iniquity is full, right? So that, that led us to believe that Greece will actually play a part in coming back again, right? So this, this beast with seven horns, uh, I'm sorry, seven heads and ten horns, this beast um, was something that we tried to understand. All right. So, a matter of fact, let's pick up right back there. So, we read this a little bit, but let's try to pick up there and see if we can get some more understanding before we move on. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh -huh. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were. So listen what it said. The dragon what? Gave him his power. Gave him his power, and what else? And his seat and great authority. And his seat. Watch this. Go to Revelation chapter 2 verse 12. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things says he which has the sharp sword with two edges. So this is to the church of Pergamos. He said, this is what he said to the uh, to, to seed that has a, a sharp sword with the two edges, the double-edged sword. I know thy works and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. Even where who? Satan's seat is. So you notice that the beast that had seven heads and ten horns and, and ten crowns on the horns, he, his, this beast got his power from the dragon and his seat, and it gave him great authority. And now we already talked about how this dragon was also that serpent who was called the devil and Satan. Right. So then now we learned about Satan's seat. So we know the dragon gave his seat to the beast. And we know the dragon is also Satan. And now Revelation 2 is telling us that what city is this? Pergamos. Pergamos has the seat of Satan in it. Where's Pergamos? Right here. Western Turkey. You know what I'm saying? And guess who was in the area of Pergamos in ancient times? Greeks, all right? That's what uh, the people, if you, if you look in our book, it says Yavon, right? A son of Japheth. His name is Yavon. In their own language, they call themselves Eon or Eon, right? Same thing. It's just in, in a different language, right? They call themselves, they don't call themselves Yavon. They call themselves Eon, right? 
or Ionians is how they would, people would say it today, but really that I wouldn't have an I sound. It's more like a Y or, or E sound. You know what I'm saying? A Ionian or Ionian or Ionian or Ionian. Um, but same thing, you have the y Yavon and Eon or Eon people, right? And they were right in that same area where modern day Turkey is now which we would uh, in ancient times call uh, Pergamos, right? So it's important that we look at this and we understand exactly what we're dealing with. The seat of Satan is in a territory of ancient Greece, right? The ancient, the, uh, the ancient Greek um, empire, right? So when we look at this and we see that Daniel is telling us that there's going to be a king from Grecia that comes back up and rears up his head, then it's important for us to understand that all these things are kind of playing into each other. All right, but let's see if we can get something else. Grab, um, uh, uh, grab Daniel, grab Daniel chapter 7. Is that what I want? Seven start off. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of yeah, but I won't. his head upon his bed. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote them. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, "I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea." Mm -hmm. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse now, one from another. Now, notice these four great beasts that are going to come up from the sea. It's yeah. important that you notice them, right? We're going to write these down, too. All right? So the four great beasts that came up from the sea. Let me see if I can give me a different color here. You got any more colors over there? Got black. I don't think that black works. I think that thing does. Let's see if it works, though. You ain't got no green or nothing? I have black oh. does. Where's my green one at? You got a red one. Oh, wait. No, he just used that. All right. We don't need no different colors. So, you know what I'm saying? But we're going we're gonna to learn about these atoms. So, let's see what the B say. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Uh oh. The first one was like a lion. All right? A lion was the first one. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And All right? So, this lion. This lion was made to stand on his feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to him, right? But before he had wings, his wings was plucked, right? That's talking about Babylon, right? We learned not, was, I don't think it was last week, but the week before. No, we it's learned last week. week. Last we learned week. last week about uh, the king of Babylon named Nebuchadnezzar. And he had, you know, he had the strongest empire. The Most High God gave it to him. And after that, Most High God took it away from him. And he just wanted to show him one thing. That the Most High God give the world to whom he wishes, right? And after that, Nebuchadnezzar was made to be like an animal, right? This is what it's talking about when it says it gave him a man's heart because he made him something bigger than a man. Then after that, he was like, no, nah, you ain't nothing. Sit your butt back down, boy, right? And just let him know what was going on. So that's what we're dealing with. He said the first one was like a lion that had wings. And after that, he made him stand up like a darn man and gave a man's heart to him, right? He ain't a beast no more. Keep going. Another beast, mm -hmm. a second like to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in his mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said unto thus, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Right? So then the next beast was like a bear. Right? It was a bear, and the bear was raised up on one side. Right? What that represents is the Medes and the Persian, because they were two different, they were two different uh, kingdoms, but they were combined into one. Right, two different nations kind of combined into one, like cousins almost. Right, and so they ran things almost together. Uh, and so the that, Persians were stronger, huh? The Persians were stronger, and the Persians ended up being stronger. So that's why the, the, the bears raised up on one side. Right, these is it's talking about all the kingdoms that came in succession to each other. Right, what's next after that? 
After this, I beheld in low another like a leopard, which had the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. All right? So next you have a leopard. All right? The leopard was next. This is talking about Greece. Greece came after the Medes and the Persians. Right? What happened next? After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that was before it, and it had ten horns. See, this one is just a beast. He said it was diverse from the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? That was just a dreadful beast is what it looked like. Right? So that one was way different from everybody else. You just have a dreadful beast. So what we got here, we have a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a dreadful darn beast. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. The countries that these represent, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greeks, and the Romans. It's Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, uh -huh. and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as so the mouth on. of a lion. The beast that you saw was like a leopard, and his feet, Whereas the feet of a bear, and what else? And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And he had a mouth like a lion. I wonder why he chose those three animals. All right? I wonder why he chose those three animals. All right? We look at them because the book is giving us hints. It's giving us imagery that anyone who knows the scripture would be familiar with. That's what Revelation did. It reveals what was already in the scripture. And then gives you more information about it. So what it tries to do is it drops in hints about things that were in Scripture that anyone who is well versed in Scripture would be familiar with. So it takes these three components that represented three nations and then puts them along with this beast. Right. These are the beasts that come and uh, seek to wreak havoc on the earth through deception. Right. It's this beast. It's the dragon who gives his power to the beast who uh, then, uh, in a way, has a second beast come through um, with deception, right? To deceive the world, plagues are going to be all over the world and all types of stuff. So these beasts are kind of the overarching theme. They represent nations. They represent systems of governance. They represent all these different things. And then we have to be able to identify those systems of governance. Rome would have been considered a beast. But at the time of John, he wouldn't have looked at Rome and said, you know what, that's a dragon with, with, with dreadful, you know, it's a dreadful beast. All right, that's, that's diverse from all the others. No, he would look at it and just say, that's a, that's a country, that's an empire. All right, the same way we would look at things today. All right, but the Bible, when it's describing them, it describes them as a beast. It's important that we understand these things and that we can look into them. Because after the plagues, after, after we look, matter of fact, before we even talk, start talking about the plague, Let's pick up back up where we left off with Yahushua. So remember, we talked about Yahushua the week before last. We talked about Yahushua. He came uh, in the form of a lamb. And a lamb had seven horns and seven eyes on his horns. And those seven horns represented the seven spirits of God, right? Then that lamb was praised in heaven because he is the only one that could break the seals from the book. Guess how many seals this book has? Seven. Seven seals, right? So seven seals are on this book. So let's talk about that. Let's see. Let's talk about Yahushua breaking these seals. This is the Lamb. This is uh, chapter 8. It's Revelation chapter uh, 8, verse 1. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal. So this is when he had opened the seventh seal. There was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Mm -hmm. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. Oh, wait, hold on. That's, I'm sorry. Go to Revelation chapter 6. Sorry. 
Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. There we go. So when I, the lamb opened one of the seals, watch this. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Right? So now the fourth beast, the four beasts, they came, they were like, come and see after he opened up one of the seals. What else? And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Uh-huh. And he that sat on him had a bow. Uh-huh. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Uh-huh. And when he had opened the second well, I heard the second beast say, come and see. Uh-huh. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Uh-huh. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. Mm -hmm. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All right? So now they're talking about trading and scarceness. All right? Talking about prices of, 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 of uh, necessary uh, product for, our, for, for living. You know what I'm saying? It's like, don't make them, don't let them touch the oil and the wine. All right? We can sell this, but don't let them touch the oil and the wine. It sound like rations. All right? Keep going. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Mm -hmm. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and on his name and on and his name that sat on him was death. Uh oh. And hell followed with him. Okay, so and, death came with the pale horse. And okay. power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. One thing as we read through Revelation, we're gonna try to get through all of it. As we read through Revelation, notice what it says. It's gonna tell you the fourth part of the earth sometimes it's going to tell you the third part of the earth notice and pay attention to that let's see if at the end everybody dies or not all right all right a common a common perception is that every single person is gonna die all right everybody gonna die eventually but at these events let's see if we see that every single person dies all right let's keep going so this is the fourth seal let's hear about the fifth when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. He saw what? The souls of them that were slain before God for the testimony that they held. So these are people that are like, man, I'm staying true to my God. And people killed him for that reason. Right? People killed him. Like y'all sure. Right? People killed him for that reason. Right? Let's keep going. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So this is dead people that's crying out to God somehow. Let's see. Keep going. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, mm -hmm. until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All right. So this, this is uh, these are the people that, that, that were resting. This, this is where a lot of people that talk about, you know what I'm saying, heaven is like, see, there go people that, you know what I'm saying, died and is in heaven with God. That's how they're crying out to them, making a darn fool out of themselves. But let's go ahead and make sure we take a look at it and make sure we understand what's going on here. So when they say crying out, again, anything in Revelation is calling back to things that have already happened in Scripture, right? It's just adding on to it and giving you context, but it's using something in Scripture to set a precedent. Some, a precedent was set in Scripture. And then Revelation grabs onto that precedent and kind of adds on to it and gives it context. So the precedent for this, we have to go to Genesis chapter 4. It's Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And we want to know how are dead people crying out. Is uh, Genesis chapter four, verse eight? And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Uh huh. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Uh oh! So Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? Uh huh. And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Uh-huh. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. 
uh oh, his 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 brother's blood had a voice, and it cried out to him from where? From the ground. What's in the blood? The life. That's the cry out to the Most High God. It was righteous blood, right? He told you that it was the people, right? They had the testimony of Yahushua, right? And people killed them before God for having that testimony, right? It's important that we understand that it was righteous blood. What do you think righteous blood is going to do? If the life is in the blood, right, and if you do righteousness, you shall live. What you think gonna happen if you if, if somebody kill you? What your blood gonna do? Gonna cry out to the Most High God. So he looked at him. He said, "You know what? Y'all take these right these white robes. I got you. Don't even worry about it." That's what he did up in Revelations, right? Abel is somebody who is righteous. What Abel get killed for? For being righteous, God accepted his sacrifice over his. Most High God accepted him. He kept the testimony. That's it, right? He offered the fruit. I mean, I'm sorry. He he offered the uh, he offered the blood of a lamb. All right, Cain offered the fruit. Most high God was like, I got respect on this one now. All right, I like that that lamb. You know what I'm saying? I like that meat. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Go ahead, God, take that. All right. That's what we look at. It's important. Most high God took respect on his. He died for it. Yahushua died for it. And a whole lot of people in between. Die for it. Grab, uh, grab Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 23, verse 29. This is Matthew chapter 23, verse 29. Well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Is Yahushua talking to the the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees. Watch how he talk to them. First of all, y'all love y'all Jesus. He's just the most kind, sweet man in the world. Watch how this man get to, get to cutting these men down with his word. He said, woe. Woe mean destruction. He said, destruction to you what? Scribes and Pharisees. And what are y'all? Hypocrites. Y'all some hypocrites. What else? Because you build the tombs of the prophets. So you build the tombs of the prophets and then what? And garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. Uh-huh. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. They be running their darn mouth. They be building their they, they, they grave sites, and they be garnishing them, making them look pretty and stuff. And after that, they be like, you know what? Had it been, had this prophet been alive in this day, we wouldn't have killed him. Our fathers killed him, but we wouldn't have done that stuff. Running their darn mouth. Running their darn mouth. I wouldn't have killed them. No, I wouldn't. There's a lot of people running their mouth today. I can't believe what the Jews did. They, 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 they don't even know what they talk. I can't believe what those Jewish people did to Jesus. You know, Jewish people did nothing to Jesus. Cut that out, right? Hebrews did this thing, right? Look, I can't believe what they did to my Jesus. I would have never. I mean, he was, Jesus was standing right in front of them. They didn't even know, and they killed him. You know what they say, a.k.a.? We wouldn't have done it. Let's see what y'all would think about y'all. Hypocrites. And you say it would have been the days in our, of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Uh-huh. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Uh-huh. Fill ye up, then, the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? He said, ain't no way y'all going to check. He asked a question. He said, how in the world y'all going to say Y'all some serpents and vipers. How in the world are y'all going to escape the damnation of hell? Let's hear about it. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. He said, I'm going to send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. And he said, some of them y'all going to kill and crucify. What y'all going to do with the rest? Some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Some of them y'all going to scourge in the synagogue. Other ones, y'all going to persecute them from city to darn city. He said, y'all going to get these people problems that I'm going to send unto y'all. For what reason, Yahushua? Why would you do this? Because you wanted to turn us from our sins? That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. It's a setup. It's a setup. They don't like seeing them like this, though. They love, I mean, they love seeing a white Jesus hanging from the cross, bleeding, head tilted, and just looking at you, looking all pitiful. They love that. 
They don't like seeing Yahushua talk to them like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Oh, y'all wouldn't have done it? Oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to test y'all. I'm going to go ahead and send y'all. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm watch y'all do it. I'm going to send y'all some prophets. I'm going to send y'all some righteous men. And y'all going to kill them. Or y'all going to chase them from city to city. Or y'all going to scourge them. Or y'all going to crucify them. And when y'all do it, I'm doing it so that I can put, bring all the righteous blood on y'all all the way from Abel to Zacharias. Right? He said, I'm going to bring all the righteous blood that was spilled because all that righteous blood is crying out to the Most High God. He said, all of it, I'm going to bring it on y'all butt. This is y'all, Yahushua, y'all Jesus. This is, this is who y'all talking about. It's in the same book that y'all read. I didn't put it there. He put it there. It's just that sometimes when Jesus talks, they, like they don't really like to, you know, they don't really like to look at it for what it is. They only like to take it when, you know, they take what they, you know, when Jesus called Peter to come off the boat, that's the type, you know, that's the type of Jesus they like. When they get to talk about this, you know what I'm saying, they just ignore it, act like, you know, well, you know, you know those Pharisees, that's how bad the Pharisees, you know, ain't no bad, how bad they are. Y'all some Pharisees. All y'all some Pharisees. How you not a Pharisee and you do it your way? If you ignore the righteousness of God, if God say this is righteous and you going that way, how you not a Pharisee? You a hypocrite. You self-righteous. If God say this is righteous and you doing that, Calling yourself righteous, how you not going to be self-righteous? If God say the only way is to come through my son, and you sitting here and say all you got to do is say a prayer to be saved, how you not self-righteous? How you going to come through the song but son by saying a prayer and the man told you to obey? He said he the door, you come up any other way, you a thief and a robber, and you feel like you could just say a prayer to get up there. You feel like you can do it. You feel like it don't matter what you do. The man tell you he's going to judge you by every deed. You say it don't matter what you do. But you're not self-righteous. How that's not self-righteous? If you're righteous by any means in your eyes, it, by any means outside of what the word have, you self-righteous. I don't care if you legal, what they call legalistic. I don't care if you self-righteous because you say, by keeping the law, I'm righteous. That's self-righteous too. And by saying, you know what? It don't matter what you do. God love you no matter what. That's self-righteous too. All oh, y'all darn self-righteous. Y'all ain't obeying the book. You don't obey the book and you, you admit you don't obey the book and you admit you a sinner. And you good. You going to hell, but you good. You ain't no say you ain't self-righteous. Right? You an honest darn man in that regard. What you gonna do? But a lot of y'all won't admit it. A lot of y'all just keep on, you know, moseying along, living your darn life. And you don't realize that what, what's happening in Revelation is setting you up to be part of the group that has the blood of, of righteous men poured out on the ground and crying out to God. Everything that you see in this book is giving you a way out of a setup. We used to we used to open up all the time with Isaiah chapter 28. All right? And it told us pretty much it's a snare for us. The Most High God speaks to us in a way that we don't understand and it ends up being a trap. This is what he's talking about. That's why he told y'all. He's like, "Okay, y'all say y'all ain't going to do it." Y'all think he don't know what he's talking. He said, "Y'all say y'all wouldn't do it. Y'all say y'all wouldn't be the ones that killed him, huh?" Okay. I'm going to send y'all some prophets. I'm going to send y'all some righteous men. Y'all going to kill a butt too. And y'all going to crucify him. And y'all going to chase him from city to city. And y'all going to punish him. And he said, I'm going to do it just for the reason that the righteous blood all the way from Abel is going to cry out to the Most High God against y'all too. Everybody going to get it. And that's what we look at in Revelation. When we go back into Revelation, just uh, Revelation 6, when we go back into Revelation, I ain't talking about nobody in heaven. When you hear people crying, I ain't got nothing to do with nobody in darn heaven. It has to do with the blood. He told you to, that he trying to that he want to read it again. He just told you he was avenging their blood, right? You got people using their imagination instead of reading the darn book. That upon you may come the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah. Whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Uh-huh. This is uh, Revelation chapter uh, 6. You read Zechariah, you wouldn't even know he got killed. Huh? Because if you read Zechariah, you wouldn't even know he got killed. You don't know unless you, you know what I'm saying, you got our history. You know what I'm saying? The history, you know what I'm saying? It's some, it's some history that we ain't even got. Right. 
like in Zechariah, it didn't say nothing like it that. It don't end that way. Yeah. yeah. It don't end that way. Or Ezra or uh, or Nehemiah. You know what I'm saying? Even Paul. You know what I'm saying? It don't end with Paul's death. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no ending with Peter's death. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these things wasn't written in what we have. You know, there's a lot of people like, yeah, it's, it's more books out there than the Bible. I ain't saying there ain't more stuff, stuff out there. There's all types of information out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, these books got the truth in it. A lot of other stuff you find might have a little bit of truth, might have a little bit of lies in it, just like any other book you go to the bookstore and get. I'm yeah, telling right. you, these books got the darn truth in it. I ain't saying no other ones. I ain't saying there ain't no other books out there with truth in it. I'm just telling you, these got the truth in it. Yeah, I'm telling you, these got what you need in it. You know what I'm saying? Some other stuff can go along with it. Some other stuff can come along and agree with it. I can write a book right now that agree with it. That thing don't make mine good for saving, though. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I can do is agree with the Most High God. I'm telling you, this is what stuff got to agree with. I care nothing about no other books. You, you read them if you want to. I done read some of my darn self. Right? I ain't about to kill a whole bunch of time trying to read some extra stuff when I got what it take right here. How much time I'm going to spend reading some extra stuff if I got exactly what it take right here? If I do that, then that means I'm not really interested. I'm interested in trying to outdo somebody. Oh, look, I found one that you don't even know about. Okay, you win. You know what I'm saying? I got the whole book right there. You trying to find something new. All right, for sure. Even Solomon told of many books. You know what I'm saying? No end. Grab that for me real quick. This is, uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I hope it is. Man, it's been a while. Yeah. This is Ecclesiastes, I want to say chapter 12, give me about verse, uh, give me, tell me what the last verse is. I imagine the last verse would be like 14, 15, maybe 18. 14. 14. So last verse 14, give me like verse 8. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. All this, is, is vanity. this is this is Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12, verse 8. He said, Vanities, vanity, says the preacher. All is vanity. Uh huh. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. He said, Because the preacher was wise, he still taught. He said, The whole thing, this, this whole shebang is vanity. But because the preacher was wise, guess what? He still taught the people knowledge. He still gave the people knowledge. He said, Man, I got a job. I know all this stuff is vain. I got a job to do, though. What I'm going to do? Stop? He said he still taught the people knowledge. Man, I love the most high God. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. He set them things in order, made sure people understood them. He gave good heed. He warned people. Made sure you paid attention to the things that was important. This is what the preacher did. Let's hear about it. He sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even uh -huh. words of truth. Uh huh. The words of the wise are as gold. Nails. What's a gold? A gold? Yeah. Then like a, uh, like a wooden something like a. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You have an animal, and so you have like a big animal, like a darn cow or something, or a bull. You know what I'm saying? And so you would take a gold, which is kind of like a spear. You know what I'm saying? It's like a small little spear. You, can, you ain't trying to kill the animal, but if you want the animal to go that way and not try to attack you or not try to come your way and push you over because it's bigger than you, you just kind of poke it a little bit with the gold, so it's gonna make the animal go like that. And so the gold kind of pushes it in the right direction because it hurt the animal. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he said. He said, words of the wise are like what? They're like gold. So you think the animal think that the gold feel good against his skin? But it makes him go the right direction, don't it? So that's when, when people hear wise words, nowadays, they say, why are you attacking me? Right? Why are you making me feel? I'm the, the, the man who got the, got the gold against the bull, he not attacking him. He trying to get him inside the stable. Inside the stable is his food. That's his woman in there, right? He got all his kids inside the darn stable. Everything that he needs for his life is inside that stable. He being taken care of. But the bull don't know that. The bull just trying to run darn wild. So you got a man, a wise man, who got goals and poke him and he pushing him in the right direction. It hurt the bull, though. Bull don't like it. Bull get a little frustrated when it happens. But when he get to where he needs to go, bull's happy. This is what the Most High God is trying to let us know. He said, wise words are like golds. Them things hurt a little bit, right? And that's why you see people lash out. Why are you attacking me, right? Why are you saying this? Why y'all hating? Why y'all throwing salt? All these different things. And things just gold. That's a natural response to gold. Keep going. And as nails, as, as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, 
which are given from one shepherd. Uh huh. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making books. He said, of making books? Of making many books. Of making many books. There is no end. He said, ain't no end to that. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Oh, there you go. I got that. Go ahead and keep looking for books. You think the man just making stuff up? I didn't just put that there. He said, man, it's no end. Yes, there are. Uh, yes. Let me, let me. Yes, there are other books. Right? Yes, there are other books. Don't believe no lies if somebody tell you somebody took some books out of the Bible. You have to ask them, when, what was the Bible before they took it out? Ask them that. Just ask, them, okay, so what was the Bible before they took it out? If people took stuff out of the Bible, what was it before they took it out? All right? They run in their darn mouth. The Bible as we know it today is a compilation of many books, Hebrew books, right? There are other Hebrew books, absolutely. There are other non-Hebrew books, absolutely. They discuss God. Some of them are accurate. Some of them are not accurate, are seemingly not accurate, right? Fine. I'm telling you, of making books, there are no end. Anybody can make a book. A whole lot of people didn't make books. And of studying, man, that thing, too much of that thing, that thing would be weariness to the flesh. Y'all keep running y'all darn mouth. Y'all keep running out here trying to chase stuff, trying to look for the, trying to look for the new gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So you can come back and be like, oh, look, I found this and nobody else found it. You trying to find something, you find it in this book. All right? Found it in this book. I don't mind you looking at some other book. I'm just telling you where the I'm trying to tell you where it's at. I'm trying to tell you where the gold is, the one that's gonna push you in the right direction. Alright? This do uh this is uh this is uh this is uh okay, we'll keep going. We got anything else there? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole he said, matter. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the whole duty of man. That's it. That's all. When it all come down to it, just obey God. You self-righteous, you do anything else. Anything else, you darn self-righteous. You think you're going to be saved doing anything you want to do, you self-righteous. You think you're going to be saved just by obeying the law, when Yahushua told you you got to obey him, you self-righteous. And you, and both sides going to darn hell. How you gonna, I mean, how you going to do it if you're not going to come through Yahushua and do it the way he told you? It doesn't make sense. And this is how what we see in Revelation, this is how it captures people. It traps people because it's going to put people in all these plagues, all these different things. And we saw, we saw the four horses, four different horsemen. That, that, that are coming out and they have all these different qualities. They're going to be trapping people, setting people up, and we, are, we have to be able to obey God, walk in the way that he wants to avoid these things. Otherwise, we'd be caught right in the darn midst, right? And people so mesmerized about the stuff that they see in the book, it's like we was talking about, the, you know what I'm saying, it said that uh, uh, the, the uh, people were crying out to Yahushua. I mean, crying out to the Most High God. He gave them white robes. And they imagine now, that's people in heaven, right? And it's all because they don't know the scriptures. They're so busy looking at other books, reading, you know, Purpose Driven Life and, and Seven Love Languages and all these different things that, you know what I'm saying, we don't read. Yeah, I got it. She got that thing on the toilet. She got that thing on the toilet every time she's in there, you know what I'm saying, doing her, she be doing whatever she do. She be looking at that thing, you know what I'm saying, trying to read the Seven Love Languages. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Seven Love Languages. How many is five? Yeah, that's good. Five love languages. Who said it's five? Why it can't be six? <laughs> that's what I'm trying. I'm just trying to figure why it can't be. Why you can't pick a nice round number like ten? I'll write a book right now. I'm gonna pick ten of them things. I bet you all of them make sense too. Anything makes sense, you tell it to. Right? We 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 spend so much time reading all these other books to tell us about a book. We got the book right here. And you got to read another book to tell. If I got to read another book about a book to understand a book, that means that first book I read ain't no good. We ain't going to admit it. Ain't nobody going to admit it, but that's what it comes down to. I got to read. If I got to read commentary about a book, I got a book right here. The bottom of it got commentary. The book is what's really written, though. This is what I really want to learn. But then somebody else wrote their commentary at the bottom. That means what I'm reading ain't nothing. Why well, I got to go somewhere else to learn about what I'm reading? Why do I need another book about a book? That means it ain't no good. We ain't going to admit that, though. We ain't going to admit it. 
if another book teach me about the book, which book do I trust? Right. Make a fool out of us every single time. Make a fool. I ain't got purpose driven. Like, oh, please, you don't know nothing about no purpose. I don't know something about a purpose, and you, you ain't even quoting the book. You misquoting it. You make a fool out of us. Just give me the book. I'll learn my purpose. The man just told you the purpose. What is it? What verse is that? 13. It's verse 13. What do you say? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It's the conclusion of the whole matter. This is what the end of it is. Fear God and keep his commandments. Uh-huh. Because that's the what? For this is the whole duty of man. You want to know your purpose? That's your, that's your duty. Same thing. Purpose. He said the whole purpose of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Don't let these people make a fool out of you. You'll be out here believing myths. Lucifer and Satan, he used to be the, the most beautiful angel. Jesus, see, Jesus, he, he uh, Jesus, see, he used to uh, be brothers with uh, Michael and all these different things that they come up with. Angels are, 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 are men and women and babies. All babies go to heaven. All dogs go to heaven. All right? If you're looking at, you know what I'm saying? When you die, you go to heaven. You believe all these different myths. None of this stuff. My grandma's looking down on me. That's how they comfort themselves. Ain't that how they comfort? I mean, if I want to cut, if, if, if I'm going to I'm a good Christian. Right? I'm a good Christian. Right? You lose your grandparents. I'm going to comfort you by saying, you know what? Don't worry about it, sis. They looking down on us from heaven. That's comforting, right? This is uh, this First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four. Give me verse seventeen. All dogs go to darn heaven. Book say you a dog too. He said it's like a dog that go back to a darn vomit. Hypocrite. All dogs go to heaven. Where'd you say go? This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Watch what it say. Because we come, I mean, that's how they come. I saw it on Facebook the other day. Almost coming, you know what I'm saying? Brother of mine, you know what I'm saying, said some, you know what I'm saying, stuff about missing his moms and everything, you know what I'm saying? Almost coming. I saw that, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Appropriate for me, man. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to <laughs> I can't, you on purpose. I can't compete with that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What I'm supposed to say? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to look like a jerk. I say what's real. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to you in person when we can, you know what I'm saying, when we had discussed. I ain't about to put this on the so you can misunderstand what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You look at it like, yeah, she's looking down on us. You know what I'm saying? That thing feel comforting, but why we got to be comforted with lies? Right. Why we can't, why the, why the truth can't comfort us? Why we can't comfort us like, man, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who died, man, they had their chance. It's time for us to live right and stop taking chances. People talking about you only live once. You know what I mean? That's crazy. You only live once. You might want to get it darn right. Only live once and so you're going to go wild. I mean, make it don't it don't make logical sense. You live wrong. once you get it right. Man ain't giving you no other chances. It's uh 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. They think we talk, they think you talk about heaven, right? They're gonna be caught up in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And what's gonna happen? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with he these said, words. He said, do what? Comfort one another with these words. When was the last time? Okay, so give me, uh, we started at verse 17. Mm -hmm. Give me verse 16. Watch this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He said he going to descend from heaven with a with shout, right? With the voice of an angel. With the voice of an angel. And the, what else? Of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And it's going to have a trumpet of God. What else? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then the dead in Christ, right? The dead in the Messiah going to do what? Rise first. What that sound like? Heaven? Or that sound like resurrection? resurrection. He's talking about the resurrection. Keep going. And then what's going to happen to us? And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So they're going to rise first. They resurrected. Then we're going to be caught up with them. In where? In heaven? In the clouds. Oh, in the clouds. Not in heaven. And then what else? To meet the Lord in the air. What else? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I wonder what we're supposed to do with this information, y'all. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, if somebody died, we started at verse 16 that time? Mm -hmm. Give me verse 15 this time. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not Give me verse 14. 
For if we believe that Yahushua died and rose again, even so them also which... Give me verse 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. He said, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He said, y'all sad about the people that are asleep. He said, I would not have you be ignorant, brother, that you sorrow not. The people that sleep, he's talking about dead. He said, I'm, I don't want you to be ignorant about how this works. Watch this. For if we believe that Yahushua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahushua will God bring with him. He said, the people that y'all talking about that dead, if they sleep in Yahushua, we believe that they will come back. Now skip on down to verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When was the last time we comforted one another with the resurrection? But we out here comforting. Oh, we do a whole lot of comforting with myths. They looking on, they looking on down from you from heaven. And then just because we 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 so latched on to our ignorance. And we like being comforted with lies that are worthless, that mean nothing, that don't do nothing for us. Because we like that, then we're going to go look for Bible verses to try to prove a lie. Adding sin on the sin. So now I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 6, and I'm going to show you where the voice is crying out. See, that proves that people was in heaven. They died and went right to heaven. So where Daniel fit in on this? This is Daniel chapter, uh, this is Daniel chapter 12, real quick. We're going to shoot through this, though. We kind of ventured off a little bit. This is Daniel chapter 12. It's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. I'm trying to figure out, so if, like, everybody died, go right to heaven, I'm trying to just figure out where Daniel fit in with this plan. I just want to know. You know what I'm saying? It's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Watch what he said. And at that time... Shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of thy people? Uh huh. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Uh oh. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Uh oh. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Hold, hold on to what we got there. Grab Revelation chapter 12, give me verse 9. Uh, give me verse 8. Revelation chapter 12, give me verse 8. Whole book saying the same thing. And prevailed not, neither was there place me, found anymore. Give me verse 7. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels. Who? War in heaven, Michael and his angels. Who? Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who they fight against? The dragon. Okay. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was there place found anymore in heaven. Uh huh. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which delivered which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Give me verse twelve. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Uh huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Well, he said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Why? For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. Okay, so the devil came down with great wrath because he knew that he had a short time. We read that already, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Daniel. Let's see if we missed something just now. This is Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. It's important that we understand this stuff. You think Revelation telling y'all a whole bunch of new stuff? All it's doing is revealing what was already there. Add more context. Give you a little bit more information. It's, it's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. He said, at that time, Michael going to stand his butt up. The great prince which stands for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. He said, and it's going to be a time of trouble. Because after he stood up, guess what he did? He said, Satan, you better get your butt up out of here. Satan got his butt loose. And the book just told it. He said, man, woe to the inhabitants of earth. It's on his way is Satan. He know he only got a short time left. So now watch what, watch what Daniel telling us. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. He said after that, Satan going to wreak some darn havoc. It's going to be so bad, it was never this bad before. Nor will it ever. Look, watch this. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone, Who people going to be delivered? Your people. Hebrew. I wonder what happened when Satan got kicked his butt out. Jerusalem got destroyed. Jerusalem got destroyed. We got our butt up out of there. Our people got delivered to where? All nations. 
Keep going. Everyone that shall be found bound, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Uh huh. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some he said, many of them that sleep. Mm. That same thing that Paul said, ain't it? So he said, many of them that sleep in the dust shall what? Awake. Shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That sounds like resurrection too. So it seemed like it seemed like what Daniel talking about is a whole bunch of people that's gonna be sleep until the resurrection comes. He didn't say nothing about going straight to heaven. But what about Daniel itself? I mean, let's jump on down to the last verse. What's the last verse? But go thy way till the end be, for you shall rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. He said, even Daniel going to rest and stand in his lot at the end of the days? Or he going to go straight to heaven? We're going to sleep. The whole book saying the same thing. What am I supposed to do? Stop. Just act like I don't see it? Just for the sake of keeping a minute? Just so I can say my grandmother is looking down on me? Oh, that thing don't make no sense to me. That thing don't make no sense to me. Right? I'd rather go with the truth. I'm going to comfort somebody. I'm going to comfort like, man, if they, was, if they was in the Messiah, they'd be resurrected. They wasn't in the Messiah. They, they were going to hell. We got a chance to do better. That can help somebody. It don't help nobody you telling them lies about somebody looking down on them. It'll help somebody be like, look, if they was in the Messiah, they, they better be resurrected. We'll see them again. Right? They but wasn't. They going to hell. We got a chance. We got a chance to do better. We got a chance to raise our kids better. This has to be our life. It puts more urgency on life. Life means something. Life don't mean nothing if you feel like anything that happened, you go, everybody going in the same place. It don't mean nothing. That's why these people feel like they can say, YOLO. You only live once. Do it. Because it means nothing. Hey, they feel like no matter what happens, oh, the same thing going to happen anyway. I might as well live it up. There's no responsibility. It means something when the most high God say, you know what? You don't do that thing right. Your butt going to hell. You do it right. I'll look out for you. Now you, you, you're a little bit more careful. Go sign up on a job. And you know what I'm saying? When you get on there, they give you the pamphlet, give you the employee thing. You get on there, you see everybody just dressed wild, everybody on the floor cussing, just doing what they want to do. Somebody train me like, nah, really? We just do what we want to do. Pull out their phone, doing all that stuff. What you think you're going to be doing in a week? Pull on my phone, you know what I'm saying? Be on the computer, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, we do what we want to do up here. That's how I go. You go to a job, and then you see everybody in line, you know what I'm saying? We, they, they let you know right off top, we don't accept this, we don't do this. If you do it, your butt going to be fired. If you absent in your first 90 days, your butt going to be fired. You tell you yeah, that, your butt walk in there, you're going to be in line. You're going to be like, oh, well, I know the rules. Let me do it. That's what we have to represent for people. This thing got rules. It's responsibility. Most of our God ain't sitting here taking everybody. That don't make no darn sense. He created all this just so he can take everybody. If he wanted to do that, he just would have took them. Ain't got no time to be doing all this stuff just to be taking everybody. Everybody ain't going. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it because the book say it. It's Revelation chapter 6. Where we leave off. Verse 11. Verse 12. It's Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Uh oh. Lamb. So now he opened the sixth seal. Remember, now we're back to the lamb. The lamb opened up five seals already. And then the fifth seal, you know what I'm saying, blood start crying out to the most high God. And he started, you know, he gave him a white robe. He said, you know what I'm saying, just go back and rest. Just like he told Daniel to do. Take your butt down there and rest. Right? All right, then, after the blood cried out, he was like, okay, it's time to open up that sixth seal. Watch what this sixth seal talking about. Hello, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. Of there was an earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth, and what else? And the moon became as blood. Uh-oh, and the moon became as blood. What that sound like to us? The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord? Uh-oh, let's look a little closer. It's Joel. It's Joel chapter 2, verse 31. Remember, this is the sixth seal.
It's Joel chapter 2, verse 31. He said, the sun became a sackcloth. That thing got dark. You know what I'm saying? He said, the moon became as blood. The moon was just like darn blood. That thing got red. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 31. He said, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into what? Blood. Uh-oh. The moon into blood. Keep going. Before the great and the, the, ter before the, great and the terrible day of the Lord. He God. said, this is going to happen before. For the great and terrible day of Yahuwah. Very important. He said the moon going to turn into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah. Right? Go to Joel chapter 3, just the next chapter over. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 12. Sorry. It's Joel chapter 3, verse 12. Watch what he say. Let the heathen be wakened and come up into the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Uh huh. Put ye in the sick. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. We gonna talk about this too. Remember, notice that he said, "Get ye the heathen, right, and let them come down to the valley of Jehoshaphat." We're going to talk about what that's talking about and what that means. Just a quick, just a quick, you know what I'm saying, foreshadowing, you know what I'm saying. All the Gentiles are going to be provoked to come against the Most High God as we get back to our land. And they're going to come, and they're all going to be in one area, and that's when the Most High God is going to make his return. Right? And he's going to fight against these people for us. Right? It's going to be a whole lot of darn blood. All right, so that's what this is talking about. This is talking about the day of the Lord. All right, watch this. Get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Mm -hmm. When he's talking about the press is full and the fats overflow, it's talking about it's talking about blood, but it's it's doing it in the in the in the uh, in the symbolism of like wine. Mm -hmm. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Uh huh. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall. He said, "The sun and the moon shall be what? Darkened. Why it ain't blood no more? So you notice the difference? He said, "The sun and the moon shall be darkened." Keep going. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. Everything is gonna be dark on the day of the Lord. It's only gonna be one light shining, and that's gonna be Yahushua when he show up. Remember, Yahushua when he said he came, he said he gonna show up, and he gonna be like what? Like lightning. Like lightning. He's going to be the only light. Everything else is going to be shut down and dark. Just like when he died. Remember, he died. Everything got dark. That thing was dark at noonday. Right? It's going to be the same way. Everything going to be darn dark. Keep going. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens of the earth shall shake. Mm -hmm. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Thank the Most High God. Go to, uh, go to Isaiah chapter 13. All right, we'll look at another one. This is, again, going to be talking about the day of Yahuwah. All right, it's Isaiah chapter 13. Give me uh, verse 6. How will ye for the day of the Lord is at hand? He said the day of Yahuwah is at hand. It's here. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Uh-huh. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. He said, every man's heart going to darn melt. And they shall be afraid. Pains uh -oh. and sorrows shall take hold of them. He said, pains and sorrows going to take hold of them. They're going to be like a woman. Watch it. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. Yep. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Mm-hmm. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and to lay their land desolate. Uh huh. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. He's going to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. What else? For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Uh huh. The sun shall be darkened. And he said the constellations, right? So the stars not going to give their light. What else? The sun shall be darkened. The sun is going to be darkened. I wonder if the moon going to be blood. And it's going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. The moon just not going to have no light. It didn't call the moon blood. 
But let's go back to Joel chapter 2, verse, verse 31. Let's see the difference. It's Joel chapter 2, verse 31. I just want to make sure we understand the difference. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And the sun going to be darkness. The moon is the blood. And the moon will be blood. Now, when is this going to happen? Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. It says before the great and terrible day of the Lord. When we, when we look at the sixth seal, this is coming before the great and the terrible day of the, of the, of the Lord. All right? Let's go back. It's Revelation chapter 6. I think we left off verse 12 this time. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Uh -huh. The sun became black as sackcloth cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Uh -huh. So the moon became blood. So we know already it's not the day of the Lord yet. This is before the day of the Lord. The details are very important. We, when we start to see this stuff, people are not going to understand what they're looking at. They're going to misconstrue it. They're going to look at it just like people now. They start seeing earthquakes. They start seeing uh, famine and all this stuff, and they say it's the end of the world. Now, what the books say, books say that's the beginning of sorrows, right? They start, they start seeing these red moons. You see them on websites and these people promoting it. They start seeing, we had a red moon a couple years ago, you know what I'm saying? People predicted that on that red moon it was going to be the end of the world. A lot of people predicted it. We got some coming up again that they predicted. It's like, oh, each one that come up, they like, that's going to be the end of the world. No, even if the moon is red, books say it's before. For the great and day, the terrible day of the Lord. You ain't going to find nothing where the moon is red on the day of the Lord. Right? Because that's not what the book describes. Right? When we look at these things. It's just that we've always got those two confused. Right? The, the moon won't give us light. And the moon turning blood red. Two different things. Two different scenarios. Right? Both significant. Both, both keys to, to things that are going on. But two different scenarios. Two different um, uh, time periods. Alright? So keep going. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as the fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Mm -hmm. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth and great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. People got scared when they saw this. Right? That's exactly what's going to happen. People are going to look at this like, oh, this is the end of the world. Right? And they're going to get scared. So they're going to start trying to hide themselves and escape. And guess what they're going to say? And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. All right? They're going to look at it and say, man, let's get away from this wrath that the Most High God putting out. All right? Fall on us. Hide us from him. All right? Help us. They're trying to be hidden. They're trying to escape it. They're trying to find a way out. All right? He just letting them know we just getting started. This ain't even the day of the Lord yet. We just start getting started. So people are gonna start having the fear. Right? We can't have that fear. When we walk in the most high God, we don't we don't have to be hid. We ain't gotta hide ourselves. Matter of fact, the most high God said he'll hide us. Alright? All right, uh, this is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. It's Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. All right, the Most High God said himself, he a hider. We ain't got no business hiding ourselves. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide, they, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. He gonna tell us where to hide. For behold, the Lord comes out of this place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also, also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Talking about the day of the Lord. He said, he going to tell us, you know what, y'all come. Follow me. I'm going to show y'all where to go. Hide yourself. I'm about to get these people. Y'all go ahead and hide. He going to hide us. Grab, uh, grab uh, Zephaniah. Not Zechariah. Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Zephaniah tell us the same thing. Watch. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. He said, 
this nation that's not, I don't know who he could be talking about, this nation that's not desired, he said, gather yourself together. We're going to talk more about what this is talking about. That first one when he said, come on, follow me. Hide yourself. We're going to talk about exactly what that's talking about in great detail. We ain't going to get to it this week. We'll talk about it soon, exactly in great detail what he's talking about. But he tells them, this nation that's not desired, gather yourself. That means this nation must be scattered or something. He said, gather yourself. And then what else he going to do? Behold, the decree bring forth before the day pass and the chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Uh oh. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon before you. Before what? The day of the Lord's anger come he upon you. He said, before you. the day of the Lord. What's going to happen? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Which he I said, if you're meek judgment. of the earth, seek ye the Lord. Which you what? Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Righteousness. You seek meekness. It may be that you'll be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. We ain't got to hide ourselves. All we got to do is seek righteousness and seek meekness. Most of our God said he'll take care of the rest of it. Right? Meanwhile, you got these Christians, what they talking about, a darn rapture. They think they're going to be raptured up somewhere. The book I ain't even talking about. What we just read, matter of fact, when we just read over in, uh, uh, in Thessalonians, they thought they thought they were reading the rapture. It looked like, see, that proved the rapture. When the whole time I was talking, that's what they heard. They were like, oh, see, that proved another myth. Another darn myth that, that, that the Christians that came up with confusing the people. They said, oh, no, that's the rapture right there. See, it said caught up, raptured, up to heaven. Okay. Okay. It's making a fool. That's not going to be how you're going to be. You're going to go seven years before the tribulation, and you're going to get, you know, this, uh, they made us. You don't find that stuff nowhere. I'm looking through the book like, yeah, I'm going to find it. You know what? I just don't see that. I just don't see that seven years part. I mean, maybe you could have fooled me. I, they fooled me for a little bit with the caught up part, but I never saw that seven years. I was like, uh, I mean, that's what they say. I went with it. I, I used to say it. But I think I never actually saw it in Scripture, though. When I start, the key thing is you got to learn how to start trusting Scripture over what people are talking about. People will tell you a whole bunch of stuff, but you got to make sure you can see it. You know what I'm saying? If the Most High God wants you to see it, he, it'll be there. That's how you protect yourself. Be like, nah, I, mean, I, just, I just want to see it in the book. If I can't see what you're talking about in the book, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't see, like the words don't say it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you ain't, I don't see nothing that's talking about seven years before the tribulation. I just never seen that myself. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen nothing about anything happening seven years before the tribulation. Right? All that stuff is a myth. It's made up. You mean after the rapture? Huh? You mean before the rapture? Huh? You mean seven, seven years tribulation before rapture? Nah, the rapture happening seven years before the tribulation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What they, what they teach is there's going to be a seven-year time frame of great tribulation on the book, uh, tri tri uh, great tribulation on the, on the earth, and then right before that start up, most high God going to come up back, right? Jesus. Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to show up. He's going to be like, hey, all my Christians, come on up here, right? They call it the church, right? And so the church is going to be raptured up. So all the Christians are going to get raptured up. The only thing going to be left is sinners and Jews, right? That's what they think. It's sinners, Jewish people. That's the only ones left. So then the Jewish people are going to go through the seven years of tribulation. This, this is the arrogance of these people. The Jewish people are going to go through it because they killed Jesus, right? So they're going to go through the seven years of tribulation. And then after that, they're going to be saved in the end because God's just going to punish them. He's going to bring them through the furnace of fire. And he's going to save them in the end. And they're going to look on whom they pierced. Right. So now, if you accept this theory, this is what you got to go with. Yahushua shows up once. Right. Shows up in the sky. He's like, hey, Christians, I'm not really here yet. I'm just here to pick y'all up. Right. So he comes back. Nobody sees him this time. Only the Christians see him. Right. Comes back, shows up and then he shoots out of here. Then he come back again. And be like, All right. This time I'm really here. And then everybody see him. I just can't find that first one in the book, though. You know what I'm saying? Book say when you see him, everybody gonna see him. Man gonna be it's like it's like lightning in the sky. Everybody gonna see him. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this this first time that they talking about. Second time I can rock with that second one. You know what I'm saying? But that first one is like this secret only the Christians see him. I ain't never read that in the book. All right? But that's what they think. Right? Revelation let us know. Revelation. You know what I'm saying? When it, Revelation tell us exactly how that thing gonna look. Revelation chapter three. Give us a little hint 
when talking to one of the churches. It's Revelation chapter 3. Give me verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things says he that is holy, he uh -huh. that is true. He that has the key of David, and he that opens and no man shuts, and, uh -oh. he, and shuts that no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 7? Oh, yeah. This is it. I started at 7. Keep going. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet to know and to know that I have loved you. Uh-huh. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and to try them that dwell upon the earth. He said, I'm going to keep thee from the hour of temptation. All right, keep going. Behold, I will come quickly. Hold, fat, hold that fast which you have, that no man take your crown. All right? So he gives us the formula. He said, man, these fake people that come around, these fake people that call themselves Jews, man, I know what they're doing. All right, they ain't really Jews. He said, they're the synagogue of darn Satan. But he said, y'all don't worry about it. I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation that come across the whole world. All right? That's what we look at. The most high God is going to, he's going to be the one to hide us. We ain't got to come up with no darn myth to explain this stuff. It's in the book. When I tell you something, I'm going to show it to you in the book. I ain't got to make up. I ain't going to show you the little piece. What they try to do is they try to show you a little piece of it, and they build a whole story around it. You see one word, Lucifer, and then uh, from that, they're going to tell you that he is the most beautiful angel and all this stuff. He put you a whole story around it that you can't find in the book. When I show you, I'm going to tell you, is it? when I showed you it, what you saw, King of Babylon. At the end, King of Babylon. Who I tell you we're talking about? King of Babylon. I tell when I tell you something, it's gonna be right there in the book. I ain't gotta make up nothing. What I'm gonna make up? When it's talking about here, talking about us being here, he's saying, "Come on, I'm gonna hide you." He ain't say nothing about rapture up. He ain't say nothing about you gonna be caught up in the sky seven years before tribulation, so you ain't gotta go through the tribulation. None of that is real. All that stuff is myth. We come, we come to shoot that stuff down, right? Go back to uh, 1 Thessalonians. Watch this. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 16. Make sure the people get an understanding. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, let me put a, put a box around this because we know we're going to come back to this for sure. So we'll put a box around that. We'll try to operate in this area up here. I wish I had a different pen. I'll go get me some different markers. I'm looking at what you trying to laugh at my writing. My writing good. For the Lord himself shall, shall descend from heaven with a now shout. watch what it say. Let you pay attention to context of words. The Lord himself, talking about Yahushua, will descend from what? Heaven with a shout. Okay, shop. I want the word heaven. All right? We're going to put one. Heaven. All right? This is what we see. Heaven. That's one. So the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with what? With a shout, with the voice of the archangel so and hold with on. the trumpet of God. Two angels. And what else? And with the trumpet of God. Uh-oh. Three trumpets. And what else? And the dead and the Messiah shall rise first. So the dead are going to rise. And what else? Then we which are alive shall re and remain shall be caught up together with, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So people are going to be brought together. We're just going to say gather. Right? Right? So we got four things, four main components that we can see from what we just read. And this is the order. Heaven, angel, trumpet, gather. And I just want to make sure that I didn't pull no voodoo, so we're going to read it one more time just to make sure it stay the same. Right? 
This, this is uh this verse sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven, heaven. with a with a shout, with the voice of the angel. archangel, and with the trump of God. Trumpet. And the dead and the Messiah shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with together, them in the clouds. Together, right? And they're going to gather in the clouds, right? So now, watch this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Easy money. Easy money. Shoot this thing down just as quick as you can get it up. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Notice how it starts. Immediately after the tribulation. Immediately what? After the tribulation. So let's just kind of think about what's going on. We just read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and it said that happened. They, I mean, according to the Christians, their myth would say that is talking about an event that takes place seven years prior to the tribulation that takes all the Christians out of the world and it brings them into a safe place. And then that's when the tribulation happens, all the sinners of the world for God to punish them. But the Christians are hidden from that, right? That's the myth, right? So if that's the truth, if what we just read and the components of it is in this order, heaven, angel, trumpet, gather, right? If that's the truth, then that means that what we are about to read right now has to be talking about something different because this says after the tribulation, right? Am I, am I correct about that? Okay, so let's read. It's Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now notice, it didn't say the moon was going to be blood. It said the moon shall not give her light. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give her light. What else? And the stars shall fall from heaven. Stars going to fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And the powers of heaven will be shaken. Now watch this. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. In where? Heaven. That's one. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, that sounds just like what we heard. And he shall send his angels. With he the shall send who? His angels. Oh, so we got the angels. Right? What's next? With the great sound of a trumpet. With the great sound of what? A trumpet. That's three. Uh-oh. What else could happen after that? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. They shall do what? Gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven from one end of heaven to another. All you need is the book. When I tell you something, it's not it's gonna be in the book. Just tell me when these people tell you these myths, can you find it in the book? Can you find exactly what they're talking about in the book? But y'all go with it. Just like the man told y'all. He said, if somebody come in their own name, y'all going to believe him. Y'all going to rock right on with it. Somebody come, he said, man, I come in the name of the Father. But y'all don't want that. Somebody come in their own name, y'all rock with that, though. I ain't telling y'all nothing but what's in the book. I showed y'all two verses. They going to try to tell you it's talking about two different events. See, no, no, no. One is when Yahweh are when Jesus come and he and he going he going you know that's the end of the world that's the day of the Lord see that's why the moon was dark and all that you notice in, in Thessalonians it didn't say nothing about that uh huh yeah I bet okay heaven angel trumpet gather I wonder if it's a coincidence that the same man has the same sequence in the, of events why you got to gather people twice. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, if you already gathered them seven years ago, why you got to come back another seven years and gather people again? Well, see, the Jews, it says, they make a fool out of us. Talking about some Jews. Y'all don't even know nothing about no darn Jews. You quiet. Y'all been thinking the wrong people with Jews for years. Starting to wake these people up. All right? It's important that we can look at these things and stop believing myths. That's what, uh, that's what most of the problem is when it comes to this stuff. We believe myths. Let's go back to uh, Revelation chapter 6 and finish it out. Or did we already finish it out? Mm, no. Okay. Let's finish it out then. Oh, yeah, we did. We did finish it out? Yeah. All right. So that was the sixth seal that, it, that, that, that got broken. Right? And then we saw the moon turn to blood and all these calamities start happening on earth. Right? But you notice here that when the Most High God comes, 
He coming out of heaven with his angels. And he's going to come with the sound of a trumpet. And then he's going to gather the people together. Right? The most important thing, for right now at least, is the sound of that trumpet. Watch the sixth seal. I'm sorry, the seventh seal. Uh, Romans, uh, not Romans, Revelation chapter 8. Sorry about that. This is the seventh seal. Re Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. He said that thing got quiet when he opened the seventh seal. And what happened? And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. So he saw seven angels. So he opened the seventh seal. He saw seven angels. And what else? And to them that were given seven trumpets. And they were given seven trumpets. All right? So the next thing that happened after, after he broke the seventh seal is that seven angels came out and they had seven trumpets. And so now what we would go through is after each. So just like each seal they broke, something happened. Now, each time one trumpet sounds, something happens. And we're going to see what happens when we get to that last trumpet. All right? That last trumpet. And we're going to see if all this stuff starts to line up. All right? We ain't going to do it this week, but we'll see if all this stuff starts to line up. This whole book of Revelation is talking about, I'm trying to show you all as we look through it, that these concepts that's in Revelations already in the Old Testament, already in our prophet books. They already told us this stuff. We may not have knew what they were talking about, but Revelation is trying to bring more light to it. Right. And we looking at Revelation. We don't know what that's talking about because we don't know what the scripture is talking about. As you start to put it all together, these two pieces, and you know, I don't know what they're talking about. But you see, they connect. It give you more context of what's happening. You try to look at it. And it's like, oh, now I can start seeing the picture. It's not made to give you the whole picture where you're like, OK, yeah, it's going to have play by play and tell you exactly how it's going to happen. What it's made to do is let you know when you see it, you know, you read it first. Right. You know, before it happened, you know the Most High God told you that was what's going to happen. All glory got to go to the Most High God. You doing this stuff to seek your own glory, he going to chop your butt darn down. If I'm doing it just, you know, show y'all, look how much I know. Look how I can predict the future. Yeah, he going to make a fool out of me. All right? Whole thing got to be that it's in the book. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not just coming up with stuff it's because it sounds good. I can show it to you in the book. Since it's in the book, whose glory is that? I didn't write it. I didn't put it there. That's the man. I just think the most high God, he gave it to us. And if he gave it to us, what he give it to us? Because I'm so great. Got to be giving it to us for the listener. Right? The people who listen in. That's only, what, I mean, how else he going he gonna to give it to us because I'm so great? Name one person he gave it to somebody because of them. He gave it to you for the people. Even y'all sure, he said, man, y'all heard this voice. Not for whose sake. Not for my sake. He said, but for your sake. Most High God speak. You think it's a great honor if the Most High God speak to you out of the clouds, huh? Yahushua, was, he was wise enough to be like, that didn't happen for me. That's a great honor, though. Everybody be looking, man, ain't nobody ever spoke to God out of the cloud. You would look at it and you'd be like, that's a glorious man for God to speak to him. Yahushua knew he, um, no, that, that thing wasn't for me, that thing was for y'all. That's how God worked. When he you give me something, yeah, you know I can't. You can't let yourself be puffed up into a point where you feel like, oh, he gave you something. Okay, yeah, you know so much. That's cool. You know so much. The only reason you know so much is because you, so, you got somebody that need to hear it. Most of our God says somebody, somebody near you that need to hear it. Like, All right, strip this stuff away from you. Quick, it's all outdoors. But obey God. Any questions? We'll get back to it next week, and we'll start off. Uh, we'll try to kick off with the trumpet. Uh, yeah, we'll try to kick off with the trumpet. There might be a few more things we need to go back and kind of double double check on and make sure that we uh make sure that we kind of cover some ground before we move too far. Because I just want y'all to have a foundation of certain things that already happened to be sure that we move through the timeline in somewhat uh, order that the Bible lays it off. That's why I want to get the key words when it says before the day of the Lord, right? Those type of key words, it kind of lets us know the order that things are happening. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that have happened before, some things that happened after. You know what I'm saying? It says after the tribulation of those days. All right? We read about Yahushua, but really in our timeline where we are, that hasn't happened until the last trumpet. Right? So we kind of kind of look at it and try to put everything in a, in, a, in a somewhat of a timeline. But we'll continue to look at it. Let's pray out.